Gentleman's time has expired. Does the gentlewoman from Puerto Rico wish to be recognized? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank recognized you. Recognized for five minutes. Thank you. And thank you, other witnesses, for coming here. Um, Mr. Summers, in your written state testimony, uh, you described the U.S. mine permitting system as duplicative, inefficient, and unpredictable. You also explained that the average federal mining permitting process can take between seven and 10 years. My question will be, can you discuss how these delays put the United States at a competitive disadvantage and contribute to our dependence on foreign uh, adversaries like Communist China and Russia for hard rock minerals? Absolutely, thank you for the question. Um, and, and again, that seven to 10 year time frame is an, an average time frame. And so there, there are projects that have been discussed here that are, are far beyond that. Um, you know, Congressman Sauber talked about a one in his district that's, you know, 20 plus years at this point. So I think that when you're talking about, you know, putting us at a disadvantage, if you can go to a country that essentially has, you know, no environmental protections, then, you know, if you're willing to operate there, you can get a mine permitted basically by, by writing a check. If you want to stay with a, a country that has similar environmental protections, again, like Canada, Australia, some European countries, and you can get a mine through permitting in two to three years. If you're looking to get that return on your investment, which in most cases for a large mine is going to be hundreds of millions or billions of dollars of capital invested, and you want to get to that return when you actually start making money, if the difference is between two or three years and seven to 10 to 20 years, you know, that obviously puts us at a disadvantage. In some cases, our resources are so good that companies are willing to take those risks and, 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 uh, sort of take their chances with those permitting timelines, but it definitely puts us at a disadvantage and again degrades our ability to provide for our own mineral resources. I, I am extremely concerned about the China control on, on the global mineral supply chain. And, and for instance, uh, according to a 2022 Brookings report, um, that nation's refined 68% of nickel globally, 40% of copper, 59% of lithium, and 73% of cobalt. And according to our own U.S. Geological Survey 2022 Mineral Commodities Summaries Report, China has the leading supply, it's been the leading supplier for 16 critical minerals, minerals, as well as 25 other minerals our nation depends on. So my question will be, what specific policies um, or actions will you recommend this Congress to pursue to end this dependence? Um, you bring up a critical, critical point, which is, you know, part of it is the extraction side, but part of it is also the processing side. So even for, you know, well-developed uh, commodities like copper, we only have two copper smelters left in the entire U.S. There's one in Salt Lake City, there's one in Arizona. Two for the entire U.S. And again, this is a mineral that we use in all kinds of products. You know, we don't have uh, the processing, smelting, refining capabilities for a lot of these critical minerals, as you described. And I think that that has to be part of these discussions uh, across the board. And, and for processing facilities, in some cases, you run into the same permitting hurdles that you do with an extractive uh, operation because you're still dealing with air quality permits or water quality permits and other things that have to go through a federal permitting process that, as we've discussed, can be uh, that, that's very antiquated, that's very unorganized, and, and doesn't have the kind of timelines and certainty that you need to make these substantial investments. Again, you know, a, a copper smelter, a, a cobalt refining operation, these are going to be, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars that you're going to invest in these facilities. So I think you have to have more rational permitting. And then again, if there's opportunities to incentivize investment in these type of operations, that's something that the U.S. could do to make sure that, again, we're not, you know, digging up, you know, rare earth minerals, for example, in California, and then we're shipping them off to, uh, to China to be processed. We're not, you know, relying on uh, China for, for cobalt or nickel or whatever the case is. Again, there's very few of these things that we can, uh, on the uranium side, you know, we're talking about building new small modular nuclear reactors in this country, which was a, a great thing to pursue. But in most cases, you have to rely on halo uranium that's coming from Russia because we don't have those enrichment facilities anymore in the U.S. Thank you. And the other back. 